We've been looking at various ways Excel can help us expand our use of WordPress pages on our website. In the last video we got Excel to download pages from Yahoo's UK financial website, extract financial data from them and upload the data in one CSV file to our web server for use in a WordPress page we created which loosely deals with some UK oil companies. Our data was just minutes behind the markets and we used Excel's scheduler to automatically update our page every minute so that all page users got the latest information. By the way, a word of warning, if you haven't seen the other videos leading up to this one, it might be better to do so first. It could be tough going and we're going to skip a lot of stuff we've already dealt with. So this is what our new WordPress page looks like. The bold text shows data from our uploaded file. And here's a clip showing our Excel routines at work downloading from Yahoo and uploading to our web server in the command line window. So let's look at the code. Using the full file path, we set up our file to be opened in read-only mode and then set a variable count to zero. In our while loop, the function fgets loads data from our file one line at a time into a variable called row. And when it runs out of lines to read, the loop will end. In the previous video on searching, we also saw the next line where the function explode breaks open the elements of each line using a separator into a variable array called share. But now we have a big difference because this particular array is a two dimensional array and has two indexes, not one. What's a two dimensional array? Well, technically it is an array of arrays, which probably hasn't helped much. So we just press on and hope it gets clearer in a minute. Okay, so why use a two dimensional array? Well, suppose we ask you to work out how to add BG Group's current day's range to our WordPress page using the share array. You might be forgiven for saying, well, how the hell should I know how to do that? But the answer is surprisingly simple because we've constructed our two dimensional array to be identical to our Excel table. So the cell we have our data in has a table row and column reference, and these are exactly the same for our array. The first index will be the same as the table row number, and the second index will be the same as the column number. So to answer the question, BG group is on row four of the table, and the day's range is in column six. So we would write out our array as share, index one, four, and index two, six. And if you think about that for a moment, you realize this is quite powerful. We've only got five companies and eight data elements, but we could have an array of 500 companies, or even 5,050 data elements. The limit is more likely to be your web host package. The other advantage, of course, is that other than loading in your file, you will have minimal PHP coding to do and no database programming at all. Just look up the appropriate row and column addresses in your Excel table and add them to your PHP arrays indexes and it's done. And as we've seen in previous videos, we're not limited to text either. We can add links to images, videos and even code snippets, as we'll see in a future video. It's one of those situations where organizing data properly can save a lot of coding headaches and can produce something that is simple but powerful. And just before we see how this works, let's go back to our loop to finish off. We set up count as the array's first index. A strange count and two plus signs is PHP instruction to increase count by one each time around the loop. That's the same as count equals count plus one in Visual Basic. When we run out of lines in our file, the loop ends and we can close off our code. Okay, so here is some text and coding from our oil company page. We cut out most of the text to make it clearer to see what's going on. As you can see, it's pretty simple. The first section shows the company's name and a couple of price details. The second section shows the company's name added to the little bit of text we added into our file. And the third shows how we've constructed a link to Yahoo's page for that company. And that's actually the same page the information came from in the first place. And the last two are simple price details again. 
As we saw in the last video, these details can be updated every minute using our Excel workbook to download data from the web, process it, and update it to our site. The scope for this approach is pretty big and can be adapted for many purposes. We've used share quotes to show how it can handle pages demanding constant change, but it could easily be adapted for any type of cataloging, even handling products in an online store, where the main database resides in Excel and not on a distant server. But whilst we made great strides in our last few videos, in one respect we've taken a step backwards. Our first videos showed how to get away from fixed pages and get PHP to create them for us, especially useful when we want a search facility. And now we're back to a fixed page format, albeit with the great ability to update all data every minute if we wished. So in the next video, we'll see if we can have it all. Unlimited PHP constructed pages, which can be updated and searched at will. In the meantime, thanks for watching.